Now let's understand about the for loop. How actually we can iterate in a Python. How actually we can use a for loop in a Python that we are going to see. A for loop is used for iterating over a sequence that is either a list, tuple, dictionary, set or a string. If we have to iterate, we can use a for loop. Let's take one example. So you can see we have one of the list. I have a fruits list. In this fruits list, we have a multiple uh, fruits are available. Means what is list? List is a collection of uh, items, right? Now you can see I have created one list fruits. In this fruits, I have a multiple fruits are listed. Now my requirement is like I have to iterate this whole list and I have to print each whatever the each item is there, right? I have to print one by one. That is my requirement. How actually I can iterate that? So for that we can use a for loop. So how I, I will write? First you have to write for. After that you can give any name. I will give the name as a i in and after that this is the list we want to iterate right? for i in fruits colon and after that if I write print and the i so you can see one by one whatever the item is there in a list it is printing apple banana and the cherry so if we had to iterate a list one by one then you can use a for loop now suppose I have to print like for i in fruits and I will write eat eat comma i now if i execute this you can see it is executing one by one so what actually i am writing for i in fruits print eat and i i is nothing but one by one it is iterating right eat apple then it is coming to the second one eat banana and then it is printing the eat cherry so like that if you have to iterate list tuple dictionary we can use a for loop now let's see the same example uh, with the dictionary uh, with the string how actually we can iterate. So suppose we have given one string. Let's create one string x and I will give as a hello world something. This is the string we have. Now if you have to iterate this string you have to print each word one by one. How actually we can do? We can use a for loop. So what I will write for i. i is the name I am giving for i in x x is our uh, string right for i in x if i'll use print and i you will see one by one all the character which is getting printed so that's how we can iterate in a string so in a list one by one item it was printing in a string you can see one by one character it is printing so that's how we can use a for loop now let's see for loop with a break statement so break is the statement let's take one example suppose i have i'm creating one list l and i have a multiple values there 1 3 4 5 6 7 uh, 8 9 8 9 something like that now in this particular list what i have to do i have to iterate the whole list and i need to check where actually it contains the 5 whether the 5 it, it contains or not so my requirement is like iterate till 5 iterate till 5 how actually I can use that so where, wherever the 5 is coming I have to break the iteration so that is my requirement so in that case we can use a break statement so what I will write for i in l this is how we iterate right now if I will do print i it will iterate whole word whatever the word is there 1 3 4 5 6 7 9 but I have to iterate till 5 only so how actually I can write so what I will write if i equal equal to the 5 I will use a break. So break is like where you want to break your whole loop. So that is a break. Now if I will execute this you can see first it is printing 1 then it is printing 3 then it is printing 4. Now after that 5 is coming right. So in 5 what we are saying break. So wherever you had to break the loop whatever the iteration you can use a break statement so that is the use of the break statement so with for loop we can use a break statement that also you have to remember means whenever you are doing a iteration and you based on certain condition you want to uh, stop the loop then you can use a break statement now similarly we also have a continue statement these two are important like what is the use of break statement what is the use of continue statement generally people ask so you should know now how actually we can use the continue statement now suppose I have created one uh, string x 
I'll write hello a while something I will write now my requirement is like I have to print all letter except L except L I have to print all the letter whatever is uh, here so what I will use I will iterate it right so if I write for I in X and if I write print I I will be able to print all the character what is available in this string right hello and then world but my requirement is right I have to print all letter all character except L so how actually I can write so I will check if I equal equal to the L if L is coming then I will use a continue continue now I will print I now if I will execute this so you can see wherever L is coming wherever L is coming it is skipping so first it is printing H then it is printing E then you can see after that O it is printing whatever the whenever the L is coming right it is skipping similarly W O R and you can see L is there right so L is skipped and D is printing so continue we use whenever you have to skip certain character based on certain condition then you can use a continue so break statement generally we use whenever you have to break the loop based on certain condition you will go for the break statement continue whenever you have to skip the certain word based on the condition you can use a continue statement now let's understand about the range how actually we can use a range with for loop so range generally we use if you have to generate a sequence of number we use a range function how actually we can use if I write for i in range and if I'll print 10 so and if I'll do print i you will see it will generate a number it will start with the 0 and it will generate till 9 if I'm writing 10 then you can see till 9 actually it is generating a number if I write 11 it will generate a sequence of number from 0 to 10 means whatever the number you will mention here right minus 1 till that he, it will generate so if you are writing for i in range 11 you can see sequence of number it is generating 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 8 9 10 now why it is starting with 0 because by default it is it is a 0 if you will not mention anywhere it is like a 0 and a 11 so if I write 0 and 8 0 or 7 something if I write so you can see 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 because I have mentioned 7 till 6 it will generate the number so whenever you have to generate a sequence of number you can use a range function with the for loop now you can see the step function by default is 1 because by default if you will not mention anything it will be 1 but suppose if I am mentioning 3 so you can see first 0 it is printing then 3 it is printing then step of 3 6 it is printing so if I will use 15 here so you can see before 14 with the step of 3 it will try to print number 0 3 6 9 12 if I will mention 4 so it will start 0 4 8 12 so like that the sequence of number if you had to generate you can use a range function now suppose I want to print the same word multiple time so if I write like this so if I write for i in range 5 print hello so you can see what actually it will do from 0 to 4 right means total 5 times hello it will generate first 0 then 1 2 3 4 so it will generate this many times the hello it will be generated so sequence of number if you have to generate you can use a, a range function now let's see how actually we can use a nested loops so suppose you have to iterate a multiple loops so let me write suppose I have a two list one two three four something and I have another list uh, seven eight nine five something it is there now how actually I can use a multiple for loop let's see so what I will write for i in the first list uh, x and after that enter for j in for the second list y now what I will do print i and j and if I will execute this so first, first it is printing 1 and also it is printing the 7 then you can see first it is printing 1 then 9 then 1 and then 5 similarly first it is printing the 3 7 3 9 3 5 means inner loop will be 
executed first so you can see with one whatever the inner loop com combination is there right that will be executed one seven one nine one five three seven three nine three five forty five seven forty five nine forty five like that so whatever the inner loop will be there right that will be executed first and then the upper loop so that's how actually we can use a nested loop like loop under loop actually like this actually we can use so whenever you have to iterate any uh, list uh, you can uh, use a for loop whenever you have to iterate over a sequence we can use a for loop i hope you got the idea please do practice